The Panamera is the latest offering from the house of German car maker Porsche. It's a top class sports coupe and it's the first four door to make it into Porsche's sports car range. Hot on the heels of the Cayenne SUV, the Porsche Panamera is once again exploring virgin territory. As Wolfgang Durheimer of Porsche explains, the Panamera is aimed at closing the gap between the sports car and the more powerful four-door four-seat Cayenne. Elegantly packaged, it's a luxury coupe which will help Porsche continue to expand in the market, he says. Essential to the development of the Panamera are the Porsche trademark styling elements. For the driver, the car should instantly be recognizable as a Porsche both inside and outside. The result is a really sporty coupe that doesn't skimp on either comfort or exclusivity. The entry-level Panamera comes with a choice of two high-performance engines of between 400 and 500 horsepower, under the hood and not in the rear, as with Porsche's other sports cars. As Walter Ruhl explains, any powerful front-engine car should be all-wheel drive in order to be able to transmit that power properly, and the Panamera does that. Ruhl recommends a four-wheel model, adding that the engine is ideally positioned here behind the front axle. Our test model is equipped with four-wheel drive and uses seven-speed PDK, dual-clutch transmission, which can, if necessary, be manually operated from the steering wheel. With the Panamera, Porsche has realized a completely new interior concept. The round instruments are still there, but the raised center console is a definite nod to motor racing. The craftsmanship of high-quality materials is excellent. There's leather and wood everywhere, but it's not overstated. And the central compartment adds a practical touch. The Panamera hits almost 5 meters in length, but sits low at just 1 meter 42 in height. Nevertheless, it is more than generous as far as space is concerned. It seats four fully grown adults comfortably with plenty of leg room both front and rear. That means passengers can sit back and relax in comfort on long journeys. And because Porsche has ensured adequate trunk space, there's room for the luggage too. It looks spacious, and it is. The Panamera's trunk with 445 liters capacity. And if that's not enough space, the rear converts into 1,263 liters of storage space. But it's the figures that really show off the Panamera's sporty personality. It can accelerate from 0 to 100 in just 5 seconds, and top speed is 282 kilometers an hour. Despite that, it's relatively fuel efficient. The Panamera covers 100 kilometers on 11.1 .1 liters, but it can become a guzzler depending on driving conditions. The new Panamera is looking to appeal to an international market, as Wolfgang Durheimer told us. Porsche estimates it'll sell around 20,000 units a year, with the sales distributed evenly throughout the carmaker's three main markets, North America, Europe and Asia. 
With the Panamera, Porsche has set a precedent in chassis suspension. The adaptive air suspension system is standard in the Panamera Turbo, but optional in other models. If you're looking to buy the world's sportiest four-door coupe, expect the Porsche Panamera to set you back upwards of 94,575 euros. Peugeot is broadening its lineup with the new 5008. The compact van, based on the successful 308 series, comes as a five or seven seater. The dashboard display is well within the driver's field of vision, so he never has to take his eyes off the road. The Peugeot 5008 is due to hit German showrooms late this autumn. Happy birthday, Globetrotter cab. 30 years ago, Volvo released this version of its truck cab. At that time, it was outfitted with a gas stove to make conditions more comfortable for long distance drivers. Today, nine out of 10 Volvo trucks are outfitted with this cab. And no wonder, it was designed with the driver's needs and comfort in mind. At first glance, these two compact cars have little in common. The Fiat 500 and the Ford Ka. So our test drivers, Michaela and Elif, have come to find out how they compare. Elif likes the Fiat's chrome features. And she's impressed by the lights on the Ford. Michaela agrees. They're a bit sportier. She also likes the rear of the Ford with its lights and their streamlined form. Alif prefers the sporty exhaust in the Fiat, again in chrome. The chrome stands out more on the Fiat than the Ford, but Michaela finds both cars pretty cool. Two nice little runarounds. And the two cars differ in the interiors too. Again, Alif's eye is caught by the chrome and the color of the car, which is picked up in details inside the car. It also has a sixth gear, which she really likes. The speedometer is another feature she favors. It's clearly set out, and all the instruments are located on the dashboard in one place. But for Michaela, there's something missing in the Fiat, a glove compartment. The Fiat only has this shelf, and disappointed, our test driver switched to scrutinize the Ford Ka's interior. And Michaela's verdict on the Ford Ka? She likes the interior a lot. It's very spacious up front, the center console is high gloss white, and has several features that give it a sporty feel. But there are only five gears, one less than in the Fiat. And she's puzzled at the position of the window controls, right here, above the gear shift lever. Elif points out that the Ford Ka does have a handy glove compartment for stowing things away. Under the hood, the Ford Ka has a 1.3 liter diesel 75 horsepower engine. With that, this little runabout can reach 161 kilometers an hour, completely sufficient for the city and surrounding countryside. The Ford Ka Titanium that we tested offers a solid basic model with lots of extras. The same goes for the sports version of the Fiat 500 we test drove, with its 1.4 liter petrol engine of 105 horsepower. ESP is a standard feature on this engine model, so additional points for safety. 
but for a surcharge, it's available for all other Fiats and the Ford Ka too. There are three engines to choose from for the Fiat, two for the Ford Ka. Despite the two cars having a completely different design, the undercarriage is the same. The wheelbase is also identical, with the only difference being in the track width. The bodywork design makes the Ford Ka 7 centimeters longer than the Fiat. Inside, capacity is practically the same. In the back seat of the Ford Ka, Alif says there's more than enough space, very roomy. Meanwhile, in the front, Misha Ela is happy too. So, what about the Fiat? It's Misha Ela's turn to check out the back, where she says she has plenty of space. Alif, meanwhile, can stretch out in front. But if the passenger space is the same in both cars, where does the Ford Ka pack its extra seven centimeters? In its trunk volume. The Ford Ka can fit around 50 liters more in the trunk than the Fiat, but the distribution of the space still limits what can be stowed. Back to our test drivers and what they thought of the cars. Alif drove the Fiat and she loved it. She said it was sporty and fun to drive. Misha Ela tested the Ford. She said it handled well, especially on the curves and on country roads. She praised the easy gear transmission, which she said gave the Ford Ka a feeling of being speedy and sporty. What she particularly liked were the backup sensors to aid in parking and the rear seats, which can be separately lowered to hold the shopping. One major advantage of the Ford Ka is the price, selling in Germany roughly 2,000 euros cheaper than the Fiat 500.